Assalamualaikum. Habari za asubuhi nzuri. Ohayo gozaimasu. <laughs> Allow me to welcome you to the United Republic of Tanzania, the land of the Kilimanjaro, Serengeti and Zanzibar, which I believe by the end of your stay shall qualify to be what you may refer to as Tanzania unforgettable. That being in place, I would like to take this opportunity to express my profound gratitude to be part of this important gathering uh, this morning here today. I should also take this opportunity to express my heartfelt appreciation for sparing your precious time to attend this important conference, which I believe will lay new foundation for innovative and effective solutions to wildlife conservation challenges in pursuit of achieving sustainable development goals, and more specifically, building resilient infrastructure and sustainable management of wildlife and forests. I have no doubt that your presence here today testify your commitment to conservation of wildlife in Africa and the world as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, Tanzania, covering an area of 900,043 square kilometers, is renowned for its abundance and diversity of fauna and flora species. About 30% and 15% of its ter ter terrestrial area have been set aside for protection of wildlife and forest, respectively taking the epicenter of tourism industry in Tanzania. Tourism industry is over 90% wildlife based and does account for 17% of the gross domestic product of the country. Despite its economic potential, conservation in Tanzania is increasingly facing challenges including increasing increased demand for illegal wildlife products, habitat shrinkage due to encroachment, effects of climate change, and the contemporary growing crisis of illegal livestock grazing in protected areas. Consequently, biodiversity, national economy, and national security have been placed at stake. Studies have indicated that illegal exploitation of our wildlife and forest resources poses significant threats not only to our culture, economies, and ecosystem services, but also to the security of our countries. As such, we are informed that illegal wildlife trade and trafficking has been identified as the third living form of transnational organized crime coming only after trafficking in drugs, arms, and humans. The syndicate, the syndicate remains one of the biggest threats to endangered wildlife species in their habitat and has wide-ranging indirect impact on the communities, national economies, livelihoods, and the environment. Indeed, the lack of information on the illegal networking might have significantly undermined the supply chain monitoring, which is necessary for an informed policy-making process in addressing the problem. The drivers of illegal wildlife trade are also not well researched though economic and political factors have been highlighted as general terms. It is against this background we need to have concerted efforts in developing infrastructures, sharing information, and improving governance in combating illegal wildlife trade in our countries. Ladies and gentlemen, human-dominated landscapes have intensified natural habitat degradation and fragmentation, and thus wildlife populations are now in regular competition with people for resources and therefore eliciting human-wildlife conflicts. People lose their crops, livestock, property, and sometimes their lives. On the other hand, wild animals, many of which already threatened or endangered, 
are often killed in retaliation or to prevent future conflicts. Trends depict that hostilities between human population and wild animals are currently on the increase due to competition for scarce water and pasture land, particularly during dry seasons. In fact, reports have shown that human-wildlife conflicts are so pervasive that the challenge ranks second to the impacts of habitat loss. I believe it is not by mistake that this conference has timely brought together governments, technocrats, academic experts, from national and international institutions to discuss about a strategy to address the following issues. Number one is increasing the level of transboundary political commitment to prevent, combat, and eradicate illegal exploitation and illegal trade in wild fauna and flora. Number two, enhancing information sharing on wildlife and forest crimes between and across agencies at the national and international levels. Number three, developing a shared spatial data infrastructure at a regional level, that is including SADE, LATF, and Horn of Africa, to support economically weak states in sharing information on wildlife and forest crimes. And number four is on improving the financial mechanism of African states to continue their efforts to address the challenges related to illegal wildlife trade and trafficking. And number five is on improving governance, integrity, and enhanced regional and international cooperation. And number six is on increasing the capacity of source and transit states in detecting illegal wild fauna and flora products, including in the exit and transit points. Number seven is on promoting the participatory approach with economic development and community livelihoods through sustainable use of wild fauna and flora. And number eight is on reducing, preventing, and eliminating the economic security and the stability impact of wildlife crime, and lastly, number nine is on enhancing capacity, information, advocacy, and public awareness. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, despite all these challenges, I would like to share with you that Africa has managed to establish and embark on various successful data infrastructure initiatives. Surely, Owing to the dynamics of illegal activities and technology, these initiatives keep requiring further development, hence calling for support and concerted efforts with a view to ultimately enable effective information sharing in the region. If you may allow me to refer one example in the area of transboundary information sharing, this is no other but the Lusaka argument member states who have adopted and spearheaded implementation of a robust information system in Africa, namely the Wildlife Enforcement Monitoring System, WEMS. It is my hope that such initiatives require support amongst African countries, but also conservation partners and agencies, so as to enhance information sharing on wildlife in forest crime and human wildlife conflict. In other words, this is one of the areas I would fully subscribe to the goal and objectives of this conference in terms of exploring means of supporting African governments to strengthen institutions, governance structures, and enforcement capacity through provision of new or improved technological, infrastructural, financial, legislative, technical, and governance measures towards bolstering information collection, compilation, analysis, and responses that underpin progress towards improving our people's livelihoods. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in view of the foregoing, I am indeed delighted 
to note that this conference is represented by experts with diverse backgrounds. I trust it will be a timely opportunity for participants to make use of this unique platform of policymakers, enforcement agencies, scientists, academia, and civil society to lay the foundation for the envisaged infrastructural support to government institutions working to combat wildlife crime in Africa. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt that organizing a conference one of this kind is costly and time consuming. Allow me at this juncture, therefore, to pay special tribute to the United Nations Development Program, the UNDP, Lusaka Agreement Task Force, LATF, the African Wildlife Foundation, the USA, Rested Japan, European Union, <coughs> NEPAD, WWF, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, and not forgetting our ministry for sponsoring and enabling this conference to take place. I should also wish to thank the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Japan, and the Embassy of Japan in Tanzania for supporting a cocktail party which will be held later today and hosted by the Ambassador of Japan in Tanzania, His Excellency Mr. Shinichi, Shinichi Goto. Of equally importance to all those who have been involved in whatever form of contribution towards the success of this conference, I convey my sincere gratitude. Before I conclude, may I emphasize that sustainable funding and technical support to regional and to Navio and Delia Mbele to Taitaji Sana, Kwenzetu, Kwenye Serikali Zamita, Kwenye Vijiji, Kuchangia Kwa Kiaski Kubwa Sana, Maeneo ya Ardi Ambao Yako Chini ya Usumamizi Wao, Kwa Sababu Bila Hayo, Hatutoweza Kufungua corridors ambazo uh, kwa, 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 kwa kila siku katika maisha wa wanyama pori huko porini zinatumiwa na wanyama kupita kwa hivyo uh, uelewa wa wananchi ushirikiano baina ya serikali na wananchi ni katika mambo muhimu sana kwenye uhifadhi wa bayoanuwai ambao tumejaliwa na Mwenyezi Mungu lakini pia napenda uh, but I also would like to convey my gratitude to our task force we have a new system in Tanzania that has proven very successful in trying to gather intelligence information, working closely with Interpol and other uh, uh, international partners uh, to, 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 to trace all networks of illegal wildlife traffickers who are within the country as well as uh, uh, international. So this task force has managed the country to be very successful in the war against poaching and international wildlife crime. Because without them, the interconnectedness between the various government organs and with the international community would have been very difficult. And here today we have the assistant director who is charged with the anti-poaching, Mr. Robert Mande. Uh, again, he's also charged with being the chairman of the National Task Force on Anti-Poaching. So he's here, I'm sure he will share. Experience and success stories. share his experience and success stories. But also, I, I learned earlier that I was the uh, Commissioner of Conservation for the Tanzania National Parks, but I'm sure uh, he left. Uh, Dr. Alan Tijazi, he was seated. Kutambua kazi kubwa inaofanywa na wada wetu kwenye vijiji, ususan wanawendesha maeneo maksusi ya jumuia za uhifadhi wa wanyamapori WMAs ambao hapa wamewakilishwa vizuri sana bila wao kwa kweli uhifadhi katika nchi yetu lingekuwa jambo gumu sana na naomba niwatambue kwa kusima, kwa kuwasimamisha na nimefurahi kwamba wamekuwa sehemu ya mkutano huu wa kimataifa naomba ndugu wangura pamoja na wadau wetu wote kutoka kwenye jumuiya za uhifadhi wa wanyamapori msimame ili washiriki wa baone.
these people represent the community, the, uh, the WMYs in Tanzania, and they form a very, very important link between the protected areas that are under the central government with those that are under the, the village land. Without them, conservation activities in Tanzania would have been a very, very difficult task. And a lot of speakers here earlier spoke of biodiversity loss. Now, major part of the conser uh, conserved area in our country is actually under the village land. There is a lot of biodiversity that is not in the uh, central government's hands of protection. So without their efforts and their need to conserve their own village lands, we wouldn't have most of the corridors, the dispersal areas, and the breeding sites. I therefore have to uh, convey my heartfelt gratitude uh, for their support of conservation activities in their, in their land. They form a very, very important aspect of conservation.